In this video, I'm going to show you step-by-step -step instructions on how to replace the charging port on the iPhone 13. Begin by powering down the device, then take a pentalobe screwdriver and remove the two screws from the bottom of the phone. Store those safely for reinstallation later. Now we need to remove the screen from this one, so we're going to go onto the hot plate for the next five minutes. If you don't have a hot plate, you can use a heat gun or a hairdryer to achieve the same effect, although I do highly recommend a hot plate. Once it's had five minutes on the hot plate, we're gonna put the phone facing upright, add a little bead of isopropyl alcohol along the edge between the screen and the chassis. And now we're gonna take a super thin Dorco razor blade and we're gonna create a gap between the edge of the screen and the chassis of the phone. Then we're gonna sort of push it backwards until the screen pops out of the chassis just like that. Once you've got it open like that, that means that the seal's broken. So you can add a little bit more isopropyl alcohol and then create a larger gap, big enough for the plastic guitar pick this time. Remove the metal blade and then we're gonna carefully run the guitar pick along the right hand edge, back along the bottom edge and along the left hand edge to separate the screen away from the chassis. I'm just gonna add a little bit more alcohol around this top edge. And then eventually we should have the screen just connected at the top, in which case you can wiggle it from side to side until the phone opens up, just like opening the front cover of a book. Let's take this back to the workbench now. Now that we're back at the workbench, I'm just gonna prop up the screen using a mug. And now we can begin removing the screen, starting off with these three crosshead screws just here and then using tweezers to remove the shield that holds down the battery connector and screen connector, which we'll use a plastic spudger to disconnect the battery first, followed by the screen. And now we'll move up to the top of the phone where we'll remove the single tri-wing screw from the right hand top corner, and then the two crosshead screws that hold down the rest of the shield. Tweezers again to remove the actual shield itself. This one can be awkward but that one came out pretty easy. And then the plastic spudger to disconnect the flex cable, which will now allow us to remove the screen, which we can put to one side and store for later. Whenever I work on these charging ports like this, I like to have some kind of tactic to how I'm gonna remove it. So I always start from this right hand side, removing everything from the top first. So like the loudspeaker, taptic engine, SIM tray, and then remove everything else. So we're gonna start off removing the two crosshead screws that hold down this little metal bracket on the loudspeaker. And then using tweezers, we can lift that bracket off. And then just as a little side note, I will be using a magnetic mat. It looks pretty messy at the minute, but if you remove the screws and lay them out next to where, you, where they're gonna go, it just helps you keep organized when you're reinstalling the screws. Back to this loudspeaker, I'm gonna remove this crosshead screw here, this crosshead screw here, and that should free up this loudspeaker now. So we'll remove that and put it to one side. And then over on this right hand side, we've got our first standoff screw. So we'll use the standoff screwdriver to remove that one. And then I believe that there's one crosshead screw just here in the side. So tip the phone up to remove that one. There's another standoff screw on the right side of the charging port. Remove that guy and then stand the phone up on its end again to remove the screw that's holding the charge port in the bottom of the phone. And now we're moving on to this left hand corner area here. We've got three crosshead screws. One, two. Then with this shield here, it's usually stuck down quite well and clipped in place. So we're just gonna sort of get the tweezers underneath it so that we can remove that. See that the barometer sensor is still stuck to that shield there. I'll just peel it off with our sharp tweezers and then put that shield to one side. Continuing working this way across, that's just revealed another standoff screw there. And then we can stand the phone up again and remove this crosshead screw at the bottom of the charging port. Now we'll move up this way, starting off with the shield here that holds down the connector for the taptic engine or vibration motor tweezers to remove that and we can lift up this taptic engine and it should disconnect from the charging port itself just there we'll put that to one side now there's two more standoff screws holding down the bottom end of the sim card reader get those two out of the way 
once they're removed there's another crosshead screw just here in an ideal world i would have put, took the sim tray out first but i'll just pop it out from the inside like that now we should be able to just disconnect the connector for the sim reader and then use tweezers to lift it out if you find it's stuck down it's probably only stuck down by this cable here just be careful not to break it otherwise you'll be replacing the sim tray there's another standoff screw at the bottom of the logic board just here get that out of the way and then use the crosshead screw driver to remove this one and now i'm just going to check over everything i can see over in this bottom left hand corner there's another crosshead screw in the sort of side of the chassis so we'll get that out of the way we've got one more standoff screw just by the pressure sensor that we're going to remove now i'm going to remove the two microphones so one of them's there and the other one is on the other side just here so you just use tweezers to peel them away like that disconnect the two FPC connectors that connect the charging port and then that should now be free. I'm just going to release this plastic sort of jig what holds the microphone in place. That'll stop it from being installed properly and then we can start lifting this charging port. You'll find that it's stuck down around the bottom area. You can pry it upwards to get this charge port out. see it's stuck down just here but over this side under the motherboard there's no adhesive holding that down you just got to sort of slide it out from under the board to free it out and that's that charging port now removed the part that we're going to be using is a genuine iphone 13 charge port midnight original pulled right you need to get a pulled one because the barometers on these don't work otherwise and it'll cause a problem with a three minute boot loop. It looks just like that, exactly the same as the one we've just pulled out. And we're gonna reverse the steps that we've just taken, removing it to reinstall it. It really helps to work along with these guides. I've done it many a times in the past and I've even recorded myself doing a job so that I know where the screws go at the end of it. Let's get started by just bending these flex cables a little bit and then we're gonna slide the flex underneath the motherboard to sit it where it belongs. Now that we've got that slid into place, the first thing that we want to do is fold over these flex cables and make sure that they're secure. Honestly, do not miss this step because it, there's nothing worse than lining everything else up only to find that these won't align properly. So line those up, get them secured down and then just leave them. The next thing we're going to secure down the motherboard because otherwise it'll spring around and disconnect those flex cables that we've just lined up. So go ahead and get that crosshead screw in first, followed by the standoff screw next. Now that that's lined up there, we're going to line up the charging port itself now. And the easiest way to do this, because it needs to sort of slide under this little microphone area, just going to peel off any plastic films off the back and then sort of slide this flex cable underneath that mesh bit there. I'm not sure if the camera picked it up or not. And then we can worry about these microphones. So we'll, we'll line those up and get them to sit down securely. Now we'll take a look at this little bit of flex cable here. Make sure that that lines up nice. And I mean, I'll even re-secure the, the small screw on this one now, once that's lined up. Just anything what's sort of springy and bounces around a little bit, I'm gonna re-secure as soon as I possibly can. I think this little area is just down here. And then we'll have some sort of method to my madness then. So with that secure, there's just one more over this side. You see, anything what needs lining up, we're gonna secure it first. So we'll go for that one there. That's just another small crosshead screw. Once they're installed, we're gonna go for the two very long crosshead screws that go into the very bottom down here, because this is all part of lining it up. And then everything else is just like the Taptic engine or the loudspeaker. So, but this is all sort of movable parts and you wanna make sure that they're lined up before you add anything else in. So now we'll go back to sort of having a method to it so start off with the sim tray, line that up, 
connect the flex cable, then we'll install the two standoff screws at the bottom of the tray, then the crosshead screw up this top left corner of the tray. I keep calling it a tray, but I mean reader. That's the SIM reader because this is the SIM tray. Sorry for any terminology confusion. I'll reinstall the SIM tray now because that is actually a SIM tray. Now we'll put this guy into place, cover thing. And then we're gonna fold the microphone over and secure that into place if it holds. I don't think it will. And we're gonna do the same with the barometer. I don't think either of them are gonna hold. But what we will do is secure down that standoff screw and then we'll come back to those springy microphone and barometer in a minute and instead we'll install the flex cable for the taptic engine first the cable goes in first otherwise it's awkward and then fold over that but I can see straight away that I'll not be able to do that until we've got this other standoff screw installed so Let's go for that one. Fold down that tactic engine. This little shield next with the two screws that hold it down. They're both cross heads, remember. One more little cross head screw in this bottom left corner. And now we're going to try and get this shield back into place. So we'll push down the mic and the barometer, slide the shield, the shield, I should have probably put this in before the tactic engine because it does slide underneath. That sat right this time, apologies for any confusion caused and then we'll re-secure this screw into place, just there. Finally on this left hand edge we've just got one more cross head screw into this bottom of the taptic engine. Now we can put this standoff screw in as well as the other standoff screw in the bottom right of the battery. And now we can carefully lay on top of everything the loudspeaker, this little bracket thing, and then the four crosshead screws that hold down that loudspeaker. And then these two on the right hand side. At this point, you can remove the old dust and moisture resistant seal. For the sake of testing this one, I'm not going to, I'm just gonna continue with the video. We're gonna realign the connectors now for the screen. So the bottom one just here, the top one can be a little bit trickier. So use tweezers to help you line that one up. Reinstall this shield here, and it's a cross head in the top just there. I'll have to realign the shield because it popped out there. Another cross head just there, and the tri wing one on its own in the top right corner. Re tighten that down now that everything is lined up, and then we'll move down, reattach the battery connector, followed by the shield here, and then reinstall the three cross head screws that hold that shield down. To re secure the screen onto the chassis, fold it down, make sure it goes in the top first and then drop it in, applying pressure along all four edges before finally reinstalling the two pentalobe screws into the bottom of the phone. We can now turn this phone on and ensure that we've got charging function as well as microphone function. And that just about completes this guide on how to replace the charging port on the iPhone 13. Thank you for watching. And see you next time. The charging port on the iPhone 3.